Rev up your engines! Kone says, how do you feel about Royal Purple Oil? How often does it need to be changed? Like 5,000 miles? Okay, Royal Purple Oil is an excellent oil. I have friends who race cars, seriously, on race car tracks, and they use Royal Purple Oil, a square bite. It's good oil, and I've used it. It is an excellent oil. Now, it's relatively expensive. It's a very expensive oil. There's no arguing that. Now, if you do normal driving, you can change it every eight or 10,000 miles. The race car guys change it after every race, so it doesn't really matter, but it is an excellent oil. If you don't mind paying that price, it's a good oil. But on the other hand, you could get that Amazon full synthetic oil on Amazon for half the price and it lasts just as long and it works quite well. So it's your choice. There's nothing wrong with the oil. Waffle Council says, Scotty, it's harmful to keep synthetic oil in your engine after six months if it has only 2,500 miles of use and is rated for 7,500 miles. No, it doesn't hurt anything at all. Most of the good synthetics even say you can change your oil once a year for every 10,000 miles. I believe in changes 7,500 miles, but once a year is totally fine. You're driving that a little bit, the synthetic oil isn't going to be hurt. It uh, is a much purer oil, and it lasts longer, it flows better when it's cold outside, protects better at higher temperatures, so no, you can do that. There's absolutely nothing wrong with doing that. One broadcast, Scotty, I got a GM 3400 V6. When I start it up warm, sometimes it takes longer to crank than if I start it out cold. What could it be? Well, that's a very common problem with an older vehicle. When you start a car cold, cold engines need extra fuel. So let's say you have fuel injectors that are old, and maybe they drip a little too, too much fuel into the engine. Cold engine loves it. Ah, more fuel will start right up. A warm engine only needs a little bit of fuel to run. And if those injectors are dripping, when you start up a warm engine, that actually floods the engine out. Now, an easy way to tell that is when you do finally get it started warm, rev it up and look out the tailpipe in the back. If you see blackish smoke coming out, that's exactly what's happening. It's flooding it out. The typical thing that happens with those things at age. Now, if it does start and it doesn't get any black smoke out of the back, that means you're not getting any fuel. And in that case, it could be the fuel pump starting to go out and you could pressure test that. I wrote just uh, Scotty, as I speed up, my car makes a whining noise, and when I upshift, it sounds like something's winding down. Could it be my transmission fluid is low? Car grinds in second when it's cold, minus 30 C. It's grinding, so obviously it has some kind of transmission problem. I would check the fluid, probably change the fluid and filter in it, and then pray, because most of the time, when I grind, they have a serious problem inside, and the transmission is starting to wear out, the way things are these days. Uh, automatic transmissions are extremely complex. Very few guys know how to rebuild them correctly. When they start grinding and clunking and making noises internally, ugh. Now you want to make sure it's transmission making a noise. So I've got a video, finding the source of car noises. Just type that in Google, finding the source of car noises, Scotty. Type that in. You see the video, and you can do that to pinpoint the sound for sure. You always want to pinpoint the sound. Something wrong. <laughs> That's an old joke. I got an 84 Fiero and need help finding reproduction parts. I want to go this route because I feel the materials will be better quality. Any advice? There's a site and it's called The Fiero Store. Yes, thefierostore.com. Just go there. That's all they sell. You can talk to people there. You can learn all kinds of stuff about it. Those are interesting cars. You know, they had the engine in the back. But they did have the radiator in the front, so wedge shape, so the radiator had to be at an angle. And man, if those radiator fans ever break under the hood, the engine's overheat and blew up. They had lots of problems with that, so make sure your cooling fans work. On a car like that myself, I would put a toggle switch on it. Whenever I was running the car, I would turn the toggle switch on to turn those fans on so it never overheated. I mean, you only do that in the winter when it's freezing cold, but in the summer. Frankie Blooden says, Scotty, I'm thinking about investing in lithium mine companies. What do you think? Well, if you pick the right one, lithium, you know, they use it in lithium batteries. They use it in a lot of stuff. Lithium itself, you know, I mean, uh, they even use that stuff as an antipsychotic drug. <laughs> It's all kinds of things to choose for. You got to invest in the right company, though. It's like anything else. It's just like now. Uh, marijuana is legal in Canada. Some states it's legal. And everybody's jumping on the marijuana bandwagon. They're investing in companies. Who knows if any of those companies are actually going to make a profit, huh? So if you are going to invest in lithium companies, my advice is invest in one that's got a track history that's been out for a while that knows what they're doing. Don't just jump on the bandwagon of, oh, here's a new company. Uh, those new companies, a lot them or fly by night, they take your money, they're gone, 
and you never see it again. I know I've lost money in the stock market, so heed my advice and stay with a regular company that's been doing it a while. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.